guys taking the time out of your busy schedules to uh, come and speak with our group. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, with that being said, James, thank you. Um, so our, our advanced group and our essentials group are going to stay together tonight on the Zoom platform. And uh, it's going to be a great uh, opportunity for us to have a dialogue uh, with Matt uh, regarding self-directed IRAs. And he's going to get into their product uh, it's, uh, with the new company they set up last year with directed IRA as well. So uh, I just took a screenshot of their web page here. I know some of our members here have, uh, have signed up with their firm to handle their self-directed IRAs. And uh, certainly uh, encourage you guys to uh, ask questions. Uh, if you have any questions regarding the self-directed IRA and how to set that up. I know I myself have a few that I want to ask here as well. So, uh, so Matt and Aaron, I uh, want to help, you know, welcome you guys to, the, to tonight's Zoom call and uh, invite you to, uh, to hop in now if you care to. And uh, if you need to do a screen share, uh, I can certainly uh, stop the sharing of my screen here and give you guys control. So uh, at this point here, it's a uh, the Zoom meeting is now yours. All right. Awesome. Well, Thanks, Bruce. It's a pleasure to be on. I love uh, talking about self-directed IRAs, of course. So, um, and I do have just a couple things I'll share. So let me uh, I'll stop you can sharing here. pass the screen share to me and it'll let me do it. Okay. Um, and let me just get this in presentation mode. <clears throat> okay. So, Tell me you guys see the screen. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. We're seeing it. All right, cool. All right. Well, um, just a couple notes. Aaron is the uh, senior vice president of business development at directed IRA with us. So um, he handles a lot of new account management and manages that team within the company. So any of you that have questions on that, he's a great guy, very knowledgeable, a lot of experience personally in the real estate space as a real estate investor himself, self-directing his retirement account himself, note investing. Um, I actually know Aaron through some conferences he used to host. Um, so, um, so anyway, so he's a good resource and just on here um, so people can get to know him. But um, Directed IRA, Mark and I started that um, in the end of 2018, first full year last year. We set up over a thousand accounts have about 300 million in assets we administer, um, really trying to become the number one player in the self-directed IRA space. So we're ready to help. We have a special deal for Renata's customers, just so you know that. So um, you get a discount on your fees if you're with Renata's. Um, takes you from 295 annual fee to 250. If you already have an account with us, you don't have that on there, you can add it on now. So, um, but we rolled that out just recently. So. I just want to let those of you that have accounts with this or that looking to set up an account know about that so you get that discount. But all right, well, let's get into the topic. I know some of you guys, most of you or all of you, I think, as Bruce said, have already had the class. Um, so I just want to hit a few key points, maybe to you know get your mind going on self-directed IRAs in real estate and just talk about a couple things we're seeing clients do that might be topical right now and then see what questions you could have. And, and that's what I can be a, the best resource right now for. You've already heard me give my spiel on the class anyways, uh, but let's, if there's any Q and A specifically you have in a moment here, let's, let's um, try and do some Q and A and I'll be happy to, to answer any tricky questions if I can, I'll, I'll do my best. Um, but let's just talk about real estate right now. So the real estate market is still strong. I know there's a lot of anxiety out there amongst those of you that have rental properties in particular, or maybe you're in the middle of a flip and you're hoping it's gonna sell for what you thought it would. And now the coronavirus has hit and it's you know throwing a wrench into all this. And I'm there with you. You know I've got rental properties inside my retirement account, outside of them right now. I'm wondering if they're gonna pay their rent next month on time and um, trying to be cautiously optimistic about that. But with any type of um, shift or disruption in the market, we've seen it. People whose retirement accounts are invested entirely in stock are freaked out right now because they've had about a 30% hit. One third, you know, the Dow was at uh, almost 30 grand. It's 29,000. Now it was, I think it was down to 18, 19. I don't know where it's at 20 today, but it's it's been hammered. Now, real estate values haven't hit the floor like that. They're a little more sticky, luckily. 
So um, it's a good time. We're seeing a lot of interest in people who want a little more diversification. And one thing I've noticed for clients that self-direct, and we have a lot of happy self-directed clients, particularly right now, because it's always like, well, what else can I invest in? And those that kind of got out of the market aren't feeling the heartburn as much. Um, you know, the real estate, particularly if you pick good cash flow properties and you know, all the other training in Renatus and those of you that have been in the real estate game for a long time know this, that in a bad economy, you want to have cash flow properties because rent, I mean, sure, there's a little bit of a higher default rate when the economy is bad, but if your property still cash flows, who cares what the value is going up and down? I mean, I want to sell when it's up, but I can always weather the storm if the property cash flows. And so for properties you're throwing into your self-directed IRA, it's the exact same principle. You know, I want my IRA or my IRA LLC or solo K or whatever vehicle I'm using in the self-directed world. I want it to own properties that are going to cover a mortgage if I got it, are going to cover the bills, are going to build up cash on top of it, are going to pay down debt if I got the mortgage. And if you're doing that, man, you're ahead of the game. My own self-directed retirement account owns an LLC that owns rental properties in Indiana. That is, it's been a cash flow market for me, a little close to you guys, and I've loved it. Um, it's built up cash. I, I mean, the, is it a great appreciation market? No, but I wasn't chasing that. Sure, I want to sell when the market's high, but I'm really going to make money over the long term, have a lot, uh, have a lot more safety, I think, with cash flowing properties. So one thing you're seeing right now, just I'm just giving some feedback from my clients, is cash flowing properties. People are feeling good about those. Um, you know, the, if the economy really takes a dive, you know, it's markets, frankly, like Phoenix, where I'm at, where I could, I have rentals here too, but I don't buy more here because it's an up and down market. If the economy tanks, Arizona's real estate market's going to plummet, as are the rents here. And so, um, and so, so you want to be careful where you're going. Just be, just think of cash flow. And it's funny the cash flow game that you're just talking about. I mean. It's all about cash flow at the end of the day. Sure, we want appreciation, but um, focus on cash flow, particularly for your IRA, because the IRA is a long-term game. When you're self-directing, you're definitely not trying to make money tomorrow. You know, you're in it for the long haul to build up the account. And really the goal, of course, is to build up the largest retirement account. Um, but a couple points just on self-directed accounts. Of course, we're always talking about investment properties. You could be in the middle of a flip right now. Um, one of the most common things in the that probably one of the, besides a client buying real estate, just a rental property or property they're flipping with their retirement account, um, which is basically this diagram here. The second most popular thing we're seeing right now is the self-directed retirement account being the lender. And there got to be a lot of competition in the lending space. Um, but again, with a little bit of market disruption right now, um, you're seeing more opportunity for using your self-directed account as a private money lender on deals. Um, banks are gonna be a little more cautious. I know the federal government's pushing out disaster loans and all this, but the real estate investor, probably not gonna get it. I'm sorry to say that they're kind of going after operational businesses that have a payroll that they're trying to loan that money to. So the private money lender is gonna be that much more valuable right now um, to the uh, real estate market because banks are gonna be freaking tied up loaning businesses money that have payroll costs, I think. So um, also, and Aaron was just talking about this earlier today, a lot of other people that already own notes, you know, that lent out money that have a lot of notes are selling their notes, which is another opportunity because they're trying to get a little more cash position. Well, that's providing more opportunities to buy some otherwise good notes out there that are already in place and just kind of buy the existing note in place with, with the self-directed retirement account. So, um, so there's some opportunity out there right now, I think more than ever for self-directed investors. Um, there's more interest in it as, as we're seeing. Um, we actually have a PR firm and are, and are looking to get on some TV spots. You guys have seen Mark out on um, different TV networks, but trying to get the message out that you don't have to just buy stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. You know, you're not stuck in that. You can actually own real estate with your IRA, have some diversification, not be stuck to the whims of Wall Street. And so that's a really important message and one that's not communicated well. Financial institutions dominate the advisory world 
that we all get on what we can do with our retirement accounts. They don't want to let you know that, you know, they want right. you to make their money with them. And so we're trying to kind of break through and get that message out there. So um, think about the retirement account as a lender. For those of you doing a flip, you know, and that's a good resource is people that have retirement accounts that can loan you money, generally, of course, want to secure it on the property. So I don't know, those are just a couple of points I thought it would be helpful to make preliminarily to get your mind going on self-directed accounts. But uh, Bruce, I don't know, or James, if you guys want to moderate any questions. I know, Bruce, you mentioned you had some few questions. I can just build questions. Or if there's an area you're like, hey, we're in the study group and we had an issue on this. Can you talk more about that? I can jump around too. That'd be great. So one, one observation or comment I'd like to make. I, I know Mark did a training on this sometime back. It's up on YouTube about uh, you know, the, four, the four quadrants and uh, the, the one that killed everybody in the last market collapse was uh, people counting on appreciation. And I think yeah. that's the one that we need to be very aware of that we're not buying for appreciation, we're buying for cash flow. Yep. Right. Yeah. So, and you so know what's funny in the Mark and I back in I don't know, 2008 mm -hmm. and nine, we developed this little property analysis because we were getting our real estate clients calling us and they're like, do I keep this property or not? And this is kind of interesting right now, given what I'm not saying that, you know, the real estate market's going in, you know, the toilet right now, but it's just an mm -hmm. interesting way to think about how you're investing today. Back then we, we would say, you know, we had the same quadrant type thing there, but it was like, when do I hold a property? And so our analysis was if the property still cash flowed, but it was worth less than the mortgage right now, we were like, keep it. It makes sense. We're going to come out of it. We knew we would. And those, those people that held because the property still cash flowed, even when the, the value went below what they owed on the mortgage, which was frightening. Mm -hmm. um, if you were in it for the long haul, the property cash flowed. You weren't coming out of pocket. Right. And so that was the kind of the weird quadrant that a lot of people were confused on. And we were like, hold it. Just definitely don't sell it. Now, the other quadrant, of course, it was like it's undervalue and it doesn't cash flow. Then it's like dump that property because you're putting, you're throwing bad money away and you're going to have to really wait it out. So if you're thinking of buying now, I mean, we can't predict price, but the cash flow analysis, what you're going to be paying, you know, uh, on the mortgage and expenses to the property, insurance, property tax, all that stuff, and what your rental income is, you can analyze that to know your cash flow and have it be pretty dang close on that. Whereas how the value is going to go up and down that there's a lot more mystery to that mm -hmm. right great all right does anybody have any questions for matt as we're moving through uh through his information here feel free to uh, hop on this is todd matt thank you very much yeah, yeah I, I i guess my uh, one of my questions and you may or may not be able to answer this i don't know how far i can go on this but so i'm just at the point where i'm setting up like a series llc and i could put a couple properties in so okay. if you do it through a self-directed can that be in the same series or do you have to create, like does the IRA, cause the IRA has to own it, right? So if I have an LLC that I'm creating, does the self-directed one have to actually be owned by the IRA or can they be connected anyway? Does that make sense? And I'm not a yeah. legal expert, obviously. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you are you would be buying properties with the IRA, but also properties without the IRA. Correct, yeah. yes. So is that two separate LLCs then essentially? Yeah, unfortunately it is. And okay. so Series LLC is cool. You know, it's in about 20 states now. It's in Illinois. Uh, it's in Wisconsin. It's, it's in a lot of the Midwestern states, actually, in a good spot. There's, but um, Arizona, we still don't freaking have it. But because um, <laughs> um, it is pretty cool. So, but no, you cannot use one Series LLC for rentals you personally own plus your IRA because at the end of the day, the You'd be mixing up. itself is owned by one owner. That's yeah. either you okay. or it's your IRA. Now we have clients do both. I got my series LLC for all my personal properties and I got my series for my IRA properties. And now that's, you know, you need a lot of properties going on um, to justify that. But, and sometimes we just do a regular LLC. A lot of times I've just done a regular IRA LLC because you're just buying one or two properties. They don't need the series series yet. But then okay. we can always convert a regular LLC into a series later. Um, pretty, it's pretty easy to convert it. 
without causing too much havoc. You know, it keeps the same name and same tax ID. So you can always convert a regular LLC up to a series. Um, it's kind of a two-step method as you're growing and building properties. Okay, that makes sense. And that obviously keeps the separation so you're not basically mingling your personal and with the IRA. Okay, yeah, yeah. all right, thank you. Yep. Yeah, so so in Illinois, they, they dramatically reduced our rates for for regular LLCs uh, what, last year or year before. So Yeah, that was nice, huh? I'm looking at $600 just to register with the state. Now it's like 75 bucks. So it's, uh, you know, the benefits of having a series for the cost savings really isn't there anymore in Illinois. So if you're looking to buy one property right now, Todd, you know, in your IRA, you can just set up a regular LLC, right? And then if you want to multiply that or you know, keep that under the same veil, then you could probably turn that into a series to Matt's point, right? Okay. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of asset protection benefits. There's like some cost savings too, but there's just asset protection benefits to the series too, when you got multiple properties going. So, you know, rather than setting up multiple LLCs, cause you still have the cost of the lawyer or someone who documents on the regular LLC. Right. You know, so it's still a good asset protection structure in the series, but yeah, Illinois has, I mean, they went from being the worst to kind of be in the middle of the road now and like everyone else on their filing fees. So that was good. I don't yeah. know. I don't know who gets to take credit for that. The governor there. Or, uh, good job. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> California is 800 bucks a year. So they're, they're like, California is on in and every year. So they're yeah. brutal. And that's just for the registration fees. I mean, what does it cost for your firm to, to set up the, the corporate books, the LLC books, you know, for, for a new entity? Are you talking about from from books when you like to set up the documents or are you talking about yeah to set up you know to set up yeah. the operating agreement or the... oh yeah yeah the documents yeah yeah so our fee for an llc in general is 800 dollars. Um, we have a paralegal option it's 400 bucks for just regular llc's okay. ira llc's are also 800 bucks if you've got partners in or multiple iras it's 1500 bucks for an ira llc because there's more documents and coordination <laughs> but um we don't have a paralegal option for the IRA LLCs. They just, paralegals can't consult on them um, and they need a consult. So, but yeah, just a regular LLC, it's 400 bucks plus state filing fee with a paralegal, 800 bucks for one of the lawyers. IRAs okay. are 800 bucks though. Very good. good and then stuff. our IRA account fee, just so you know that directed IRA um, for Renatus members is 250. That's an you know annual fee of 250. We actually have a promotion. It's 150 bucks off in March. Uh, which we may relaunch in May because March has been a weird month. So, right. okay. <laughs> um, but it's a promotion right now. We're still running and had a lot of people take advantage of. So, if you're okay. close or wanting to self direct, it's a good time to get the account going. Right. And so, what does that 250 like when you do that? What is the service that you're offering at that point? To so, it up? we're the custodian of your IRA. Okay. So, you have to have a custodian of the IRA. Right. And right. receive the money is on title to assets. So like in an IRA LLC, we're up, the IRA owns the LLC. We're gonna invest right. most of the money into the LLC. So you have checkbook control of it, as you know from the class, but you have to have a custodian, whether your IRA is at Schwab buying stock or it's another self-directed IRA custodian, you have to have that. And we're responsible for all the tax reporting to the IRS on it. If you take distributions, when you make contributions, when you roll money in and out, we, we have to report all that to the IRS, which we do. Um, so that's, that's, you have to have us or someone else. But so you're one of the companies that can be a, so I know in your, your video you had shared, there's a list of certain companies that do self-directed IRAs. Right. So the company you've created is one of those companies. Right. Yeah. We're okay. direct an IRA. There's only one okay. company you need to know, you know, uh, <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> so but if you just go to directedira.com. Okay. And that's Mark and I, you know, if you guys know Mark Kohler, my partner, who's got Renata's classes too. So um, directedira.com, right there's the URL on crap. Um, okay. That's where you get info on us and set up the accounts fully online. What's the minimum you'll see people start accounts with? <sighs> it depends on what people are investing into. I mean, sometimes we have clients, like let's say real estate, a real estate ish like a tax lien i mean they have a couple thousand bucks sometimes yeah um, okay i have clients that very sophisticated clients doing just a couple thousand bucks sometimes five thousand they're doing options and assignments mm -hmm. um kind of almost a wholesaling strategy. um but 
So it, it can be lower dollars. The majority though, I would say our average account balance um, is probably 150 grand, 200 grand. Okay. Um, and they're buying rental properties or private money lending or investing in an LLC partnership with some other people buying a bigger property. Those are the most common things. But we get a lot of people just at 50, you know, they're throwing 50 grand into a investment or um, private money okay. lending deal. Yeah, just to get started. Okay. Yeah. Right. Thank you. So for those of you that are, you know, new to real estate investing and are really, you know, don't have the money to do real estate. This is probably one of the the major strategies that made a turning point in my life of doing real estate is to be able to raise capital to invest in our deals with us. And uh, you know whether you're wholesaling or fix and flipping or even you know buy and hold where we're bringing you know short term money with through private you know private investors with their IRAs and then you know stabilize the property, fix it up, and get tenants in there, and then we'll go to the bank and refinance it and hold it and pay off our investors. So. Um, so this is a training that changed my life. I mean, one of two things that, you know, through the Renatus education that changed my life was understanding really how to do self-directed IRAs and work with lenders on, on our properties and, uh, you know, yeah, really, yeah. really take your game to the next level. So you do need money to do real estate. You just don't need, it doesn't need to be yours. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. That's a good way of putting it. Yeah. And I'm, you know, I, when I speak, sometimes I say that, if you don't have a dollar in a retirement account and you could care less about having a big retirement account. I mean, I think most people are like, Hey, I want, I want a retirement account and I want a bigger one. You know, I've got one, but I want it to be bigger when I retire. Okay. Well, let's talk about how you can grow up by investing in real estate. But even if you don't care about that, you're like, I just want to make money today. Well, there's $30 trillion and maybe that's down to 22 trillion. I don't know, you know, in uh, retirement accounts right now. So most people's money that can be invested in your deals, you need to fund a rehab, you need to fund an acquisition, you know, like that's, the money's all in retirement accounts that people have to invest for the big chunk of it. So knowing right. these rules helps you unlock the money that could be put into your real estate. Deal. Okay. All right. Does uh, anyone else have any questions or you know, I think any key points you learned from, from Matt's class online here that uh, you'd like to share? Yeah, I, Bruce, it's Kurt. Hey, Kurt. Yeah, hello, hello, Matt. Hey, Kurt. Um, I just completed the uh, KKOS directed IRA and got it all set up. Okay. And, uh, it's fantastic. It was a great experience. And um, I'm excited and the money's sitting there. And it's all sitting in cash, which is great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, it's really, really good. That part of it's really great. But so my question is since, since I have checkbook control and it's sitting in like a, just a, an account, yep. um, can I, can I also have like an E-Trade account and just directly fund that E-Trade account as a, as a stock account and then back into the market? Cause this, you know, when this thing pops, it's going to, you know, I'll get a nice 20% pop. And then I can just dump it and bring it back into the, so, so what are the rules? What are the, what's the nomenclature on that? Yeah. On, on the, yeah, on that. Good question. Um, I've been getting that question a lot actually, because it happens you know, when you're between real estate deals. I mean, you want the money ready in the LLC, right? So when you see an opportunity, you can sit on it, but at the same time, the market's a bargain right now. Some people are like, Hey, I want to get my money in there in case it bounces back. Hopefully it doesn't fall anymore, but you know, in case it bounces back and then I can sell the, the stock or whatever and get back to cash and I have my real estate deal. So I think that mentality has been floating out there for others too, because I've been building that question. It's tricky. Let me say that. I actually have a blog article on this about, um, can I have a brokerage account with my IRA LLC? There's two ways to do it. One is how you just mentioned have the LLC set up its own brokerage account. I prefer to use TD Ameritrade. The reason for that, and if you go to the blog article on my blog, strahandbook.com, is TD Ameritrade actually has an IRA LLC brokerage account. So they have a brokerage account for an LLC where you say it's owned by an IRA. And that's important because that means they do not do tax reporting to the IRS. If you set up a regular brokerage account owned by an LLC, when you're buying and selling, brokerage assets when you're buying or selling that's not me yeah. 
I yeah, when you're so. buying or selling, that's, that's not me either. <laughs> gonna, I think it's Karen. I'm going <laughs> to mute everyone, and then uh, Matt, if you want to unmute yourself. Okay. Gonna, all right, so everybody's muted here. Okay, so go ahead, Matt. Okay, yeah, the, okay. you can tell it's not me. I got a camera on, so. Yeah, okay, um, <laughs> you're not in the bathroom, huh? Okay. That's funny. Um, so, so on the, so the, sorry, the brokerage account. Um, <laughs> If, see, let's say I just set up an E-Trade account under, owned by the LLC. E-Trade's going to send tax point to the IRS when I'm selling stock and making money and say, oh, they made, this LLC made money. And so it's a little confusing to the IRS because then they're like, well, how come this didn't show up on anybody's tax return? But if you do the LLC with TD Ameritrade, their brokerage account, they're not going to send the tax reporting because they know it's 100% owned by an IRA. And so which is what they would do if your IRA just owned a brokerage account directly. They don't send tax reporting to the IRS because they know it's not taxable, it's exempt. So there's a little nuance to that. So check the blog article though. I've got the link to the TD Ameritrade app that the four LLCs that has the IRA LLC, IRA owned LLC um, box to check that'll get you set up in the right way. Do you have a link to that training, Matt, that you could maybe share with us real quick? If you just go to sdirahandbook.com, just go to that website and if you go to my blog and literally just type in um that's the ira handbook.com yep that's okay. my website here i'll right. chat it i can chat it to everybody in the chat okay great thanks okay. Aaron. yeah it's called like brokerage setting up a brokerage account with your irlc or something like that okay so there's a link there that actually takes you to the ira portal to uh, register your account All right, it's there in the chat on SDRA handbook forward slash question um, S equals brokerage. Okay. Thank you, Aaron. All right. See, it's teamwork. Yeah. So, so Matt, let me ask you, what's your uh, unique market uh, niche, I guess, uh, with, with directed IRA? What's your key, your unique selling proposition with your company versus others? So I think the biggest thing for us is we have the expertise. No one has the level of expertise that we have. I mean, my book in the field it really is the number one book. I was the outside attorney for about half the self-directed IRA industry is that like consulted them on weird stuff. They didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. And so as I kind of got in the industry, I was like, crap, I know more than these people running these companies. And that's one of the reasons we started it is because we realized we had the expertise more than anyone. And it took, you know, I started this in 2006, you know, it's, it took me right. a long time to be, you know, I definitely did the 10,000 hours for sure, um, as has Mark in this field. And so, but we also felt like a lot of the companies were just terrible at service, to be quite honest. Um, and that there's a better way to do it. And that's what we're doing. We have great service. We have amazing people on our, on our team that know what they're doing. And also... Um, if you go look at our Google reviews, this is something we really tout is we want to be known for to have the best customer service in the industry. A lot of our competitors are terrible to work with. Um, I saw it for years helping clients and trying to self direct my own dang accounts and family members. It's, you know, it's not a great space for customer service, unfortunately, mm -hmm. but we're trying to be the exact opposite of that. And if you go to Google and check our reviews, you know, we have 58 five-star reviews of clients. We've only been around for a year and, you know, the, the appreciation clients have had for us and you can read a lot of them that came from other custodians. It's they'll, you can, you can see, you can read. And that's, that's kind of how we try to differentiate ourselves, our expertise, top level of service. And also we have the a really good turnaround time too. I don't know. We're just better. I mean, that's really it's better. It's better. All right. I like it. I like it. So um, good. Um, so Anybody have any questions for Matt at all? Kurt, you had a great, great set of questions there for him. That, that's something I didn't know, even know what to ask. <laughs> so yeah, appreciate that. Question, yeah. um, anyone else have any kind of burning questions after taking the classes that, uh, you know, maybe more relative to today's economy versus, you know, when this, when the recording was done? Hey, Matt, James here. Um, yeah. Real quick, you know, I've, I've taken the, the Renatus class or, or senior classes now three times. And I've always been a little unclear or a little fuzzy. Why, why the exclusion as far as um, you not being able to do any work on your rental property if it's owned by your IRA or your, your SDIRA? What, what's, the, what's the cause behind that? 
Um, you're talking about what's the legal reason why or what's the... Oh, it, well, yeah, I guess the legal reason and yeah. what was the idea behind not allowing you to be able to do physical work on your on your property? Yeah, yeah good question. Um, it's it's a little right. It's totally upside down for what you'd expect of like, yeah, own an investment and do work to improve it. Like that's a good thing. <laughs> um, but the thing with retirement accounts is they want the retirement accounts to basically make their investments on their own and that it shouldn't be benefited by you providing physical work to it. So, you know, if I have 50 grand in my IRA and I buy a property for $50,000 like that, that investment needs to stand on its own. If I go in and do $10,000 worth of work, it's like I'm unfairly putting money into my IRA, you know, like, I, and it's a tax preferred vehicle. So that's kind of the rationale, whether it makes sense or not, or it's fair or right. That's, they just basically didn't, they wanted the IRA's investment, which can only put in cash to stand on its own. Now the IRA can spend its cash to pay someone to do it. That's not prohibited, but you doing it, whether you pay yourself or not, is just a restriction. It's just, it, it, it's, it's, it seems a little counterintuitive because like, as we just discussed, if you had money in a brokerage account and you were trading that brokerage account on your own, yep. I mean, you're the one in control of that. You're the one who can grow that account or deplete that account. Yeah. Yeah. It just always seemed like a, I mean, I know the questions come up in the past and it's just, that's yeah. the rules and that's the way it is. Um, you yeah, know, I right. think, I, I think I appreciate the way you put it early on in your training that these are the rules. Once you know the rules and understand the rules, that's how the game is played. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's like, um, you know, I freaking hate the community chess card in Monopoly, you know, or whatever. <laughs> you know, it's just, but that's just part of the game. And that's the rule book. It just says you got to do this. And, or no, the chance, the community chess use is not too bad. It's the other one. Um, but, but that's just how it is. Um, now, the, what you're always cool with, and the, you know, you'll never have a problem with this making decisions. So whether it's your brokerage account and deciding what stock to buy or what property to buy or who to lend to or who to rent it to or, you know, what to do to improve it, like decision making, checking the property, making sure things are happening. That's always cool. And there, there's not restrictions on that. So it's just the physical work, physical improvement where there's kind of a line in the sand. Of, Don't do that. How, how would they how would they find out? I mean, you get audited, okay. but there's not a case on it because the, because of that exact question, how would they know? So, right. I mean, the, the questions come up, you know, if, if you get a call in the middle of the night that says you got a toilet that's overflowing, yeah. I mean, what are you going to do? Are you going to wait at the mercy of the plumber to get there or are you going to yeah. go, go there yourself yeah. and shut the freaking water off? Yeah. You know what I, I mean? Think the IRS it, cares about that. Right. Okay. It's more like the, you know, the, whole remodel of the house you throw on the tool belt for and you're there for a month you know gotcha. that, that's the problem um but yeah the emergency stuff the iris isn't going to chase that down i mean they're not the brightest people out there but they're not that dumb they're not going to go after that <laughs> right so and and on a personal note so i have um i have a 401k with a company that i worked for with worked at for 25 years yep. and um so, so somebody in my position who is not really looking to roll that out into a directed IRA, what would you recommend for me? Set up a directed IRA, maybe do it as a Roth or something to that effect? Or what's, the, what's your take on somebody in my position? Yeah, I mean, you got some options. Um, one, you can do a Roth IRA um, outside of it, which is, which is one, you can throw six grand a year. If you're over 50, you can do seven grand a year. If you're high income, you can also possibly do a backdoor Roth IRA, um, depending on your income, whether you're married, you know, that's, I've got an article on that too. If you, if you don't qualify for the Roth, you can do the backdoor. That's on the same website there. Um, but uh, the other thing to think about is if, you know, a lot of clients we've had from Renatus have a day job, but they also have their side business in real estate. Maybe you're flipping houses or you have commission income. And maybe you, so maybe you have an S corp or an LLC that you run your um, short-term real estate deals or commission income, or maybe you got, you know, some real estate commissions or things like that. Also, um, you could have a solo K also possibly and be self-directing that. And so 
that's another thing to look at. There's some resources I know in the class on the solo K. There's a chapter in my book on it. Um, lots of stuff on my website too. That's another option. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I got to say, I subscribe to uh, the podcast that you and Mark put out every week and yeah. man, you guys are, are on topic all the time. I mean, I really Good. appreciate how much you guys um, put out just on that as, as free information for people that, uh, you know, yeah. definitely one of those weekly podcasts I listen to. So um, Good. Um, appreciate that very much. You bet. Thank you. Yeah, check that out. If you guys haven't seen that, it's the Refresh Your Wealth podcast. It's on all the podcast channels. Um, um, so just check that out, Refresh Your Wealth. And then um, as Bruce mentioned at the beginning, tomorrow, um, Mark and I are doing a webinar and we're actually, we're ripping the audio from that for the podcast. So it's kind of our podcast for the week, live webinar. Um, if you can't get on it live, there is a limit to the, to the webinar. Um, it'll be recorded. And then of course you can catch the audio on the podcast. But Mark and I did a, a trial run on this at entrepreneur.com last week. We did that webinar and had phenomenal like um, participation and they really loved it. So we're doing a tr another run at it with all the new stuff that's happened too. So um, it's going to be a big, uh, important topic tomorrow. For those of you out there, you know, that are worried about financial survival right now, you know, whether you own a business, self-employed, you know, doing a day job, got a side hustle, whatever. Um, it's tough. And I know there's a lot of stress out there. So we're going to go through some of the tools, things to know, what to be thinking about, how to be planning. We have a 10 point kind of list that we did with Entrepreneur that's on an article that Mark posted there as well that's a, that we're going to update and reference um, tomorrow as well. So check it out for sure. Awesome. Definitely will be there. So, all right. So, uh, Todd, I saw you come off mute a few times. Uh, did you have a question to ask, or were you just toggling your uh, mute button there? Just toggling. Okay. <laughs> just checking. Just checking. All right. So, anyone else have any uh, any questions they have for Matt and or Aaron? Uh, I was actually what I was going to say in response to James's question is that. Uh, in more of like a nonprofit world, I would think of that, Matt, as like an in-kind contribution, that it's still an, an yeah. extension of me. It's an investment. That's kind of how I thought about it when you talked about it. Yeah. And that, yeah, that's, uh, some people have, and other attorneys have said it's, uh, it's an unfair contribution is what they call it, saying that, you know, you can only put 6,000 in. And if you did all this work, that, that value would have exceeded the amount you can contribute annually to the account. And so it's, some people have taken a, a, a angle like that on it too. There's a lot of reasons why you can't do it from a retirement account perspective, but hmm. yeah. Gotcha. Um, you know, one of the other things that uh, going through the videos or your, your note slides from the class. So I, I know and understand that you, that they no longer allow you to use uh, your self-directed IRA to buy any collectibles but yet gold and silver and precious metals are not considered collectibles. Yep. Um, there's a couple reasons why. One is the U.S. Mint okay. is the biggest sellers of precious metals, particularly those that could be deemed collectibles like American Eagles and stuff like that. So it's a revenue source for our federal government. So would gold coins or silver coins be excluded because those are yep. more collectible? Depending on whether if they're American Eagles and stuff by the U.S. Mint, yes. Other yes. foreign government yeah. coins can can uh, be owned by an IRA as well. So in my, I have a whole chapter in my book on precious metals. I don't talk about it a lot at Renatus because it's more real estate. But I do have a whole chapter in it. We have hundreds of clients that are precious metals investors at directed IRA. So, um, but yes, you can own certain qualifying precious metals, like not like Krugerrands, and there's other common precious metals out there that don't qualify, but there's certainly a large amount that do. You know, bullion does if it has a has a fineness and purity requirement to it. So yeah. Okay. And and are you and are you finding people that are um, investing with Bitcoin too at all or no? Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Also a chapter in my book I got an article I got a um, video on it too on my website. Um, usually you'll use an IRA LLC to do crypto because crypto requires you to link to a wallet. Um, and so you need a bank account easily to be able to link and the LLC bank account's the best way to do it. So 
Um, but yes, possible. You can do, you can. I mean, I, you know, th those are things, real estate, I do it more like, and it's kind of more of our bread and butter at Directed IRA too. But I mean, we have clients all over the place and I've got clients that were buying crypto really early on that are, that are done very, very well. We got clients that bought crypto too when it was all hyped up and that, you know, they've lost half their account because it's gone down since the hype. So, um, so, you know, it's kind of invest in what you know, if you're into that and know it um, or want to learn about it, it's certainly an option. You can do it with a self-directed IRA. Very good. All right. Same, so, same goes for trust deed investing or note investing. Um, a lot of my, my father for many years, you know, funds a lot of the, the fix and flips locally in Phoenix. So, you know, he's the, the lender on it. He uses his self-directed IRA for that. So, and that's a good way if, you know, you can only do, let's say 10, 20, 30 grand that you're working with as well. That's a, you know, I know we talked about 50 grand was one of the numbers I heard thrown out, you know, or that's sitting in cash to do a deal. But if you don't have that much, then maybe lending on a project would best suit you. But what Matt said was super important, just investing in what you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. I think that's important. So, so Aaron, if you would uh, tell us a little bit about your background and, and introduce yourself to the group here, because I would imagine that you'd be a point of contact if folks yeah. want to get set up with uh, directed IRA. Yeah, absolutely. Happy to. So you have Matt's email there, but I'll just, I'll, I'll chat in mine as well. So it's Aaron dot uh, Halderman at directed IRA. Uh, dot com and so I just I just sent that in the chat and if you want to check those articles on the backdoor Roth and the solo 401k and then the brokerage though I put those in the chat as well um, so you know my background I started off in software um, years ago worked at a for a CRM company for 10 years had penny stock that was bought by Goldman and Bain for twelve dollars so I made a good good little chunk of change and I got uh, involved with local real estate clubs in Phoenix and started investing in real estate, uh, primarily uh, fixing and flipping, then started doing some lending, uh, some new development. And then in 2009, uh, I went to an annual convention by a self-directed trust company uh, that I was in a mastermind with, with one of the, the co-owners of that and mm -hmm. learned about self-directing and, and then started to transition, you know, helping my, my father, my father-in-law uh, do some lending as they uh, got into retirement and needed some extra cash flow. And um, so I, I, I invested heavily in uh, trust deeds and uh, managed my own investment firm, uh, investing in delinquent notes. So I was buying what's called non-performing notes or non-paying notes right. uh, and, and built a nice portfolio of cash flow for that uh, but there's no equity right because those are all rate and term deals with you know and once they're paid back they're paid back and you're back in cash um, I've always been a, a, a big fan of uh, the IRA space and so um, uh, Matt had mentioned you know speaking at a couple conferences uh, that I host every year uh, that's specific in the note investing space and so we developed a good relationship. And then when he said he was going to start a trust company, he and Mark, you know, um, I fully supported that and, you know, uh, teamed up with them December of last year. So, you know, I, like Matt said, I oversee all of the, you know, my, my background is just as I outlined, but I really am an expert in notes and real estate. Um, and, and, you know, Matt, is the expert in IRAs, Mark's the expert in, you know, on, on tax and, and legal strategies for that. And so it's really kind of a perfect combination and, and balance for all of our skill set and to really best serve, um, you know, your, your team and what y'all are looking to accomplish. And so we're just here to be as a, a good resource and answer any questions you have. You have my, my email and my, my private cell. I'll even give that out to the bat line. So there, the line. Wow. you <laughs> so guys there, are getting their royal getting treatment backdoor access here. My goodness. <laughs> yeah, this is, right. this is like, special. Um, wow. 
You know, Aaron, I, for those of you that have been in the note space a little or done note investing, um, like he has events called Noteworthy and the Note Investor Summit that he's done over the years that are pretty well known mm -hmm. um, events. Those are his um, um, that he's had and some of them he's kind of got some partners too that are, but, um, but anyways, so, um, but he's, you know, he's the host of those. He's very well known in those. Um, Jeff Armstrong, those of you that know his class right. and his curriculum, he he's spoke at a number of those conferences over the years too. So, yep. So Aaron's yep. a good, he's a good guy, knows his stuff, and important part of our team here. Yeah, yep. yeah. Jeff well, Armstrong thanks. was just just here in uh, in Chicago this past weekend, so uh, I know some he's folks. He's a great guy. Attended. Yep. Very good guy. Very good. Yeah, we're just happy to help and serve in any way we can, and we love what we do. We're very passionate about it, and believe that you know it can really help everybody achieve their goals. And so there's just so many different strategies, you know, to, to implement as well. So we're just excited to help support you guys. That's great. That's great. So, um, yeah, so I, I had a couple of questions too. So uh, before I get in there, I just want to make sure everybody's gotten their questions answered. If anybody has any comments or questions, uh, you know, take this moment here to, uh, to unmute yourself and, and jump in. Yeah. Hey Matt, this is John. Hi. How you doing? I have a self-directed IRA in Illinois with a Illinois LLC. Can I buy property out of state, say Florida, and can I use that property at 59 and a half for any use of it? Ooh, good question. Okay, on the front end, yes. Then the first one, yes. Second one, no. Um, <laughs> first question, yes. You can, the Illinois LLC can own property in Florida. You'll need to do one thing though, and do what's called a foreign registration. So you got to register the Illinois LLC foreign into Florida. Our law firm does those KQS lawyers. It's 250 bucks to register an entity foreign. Um, just call our office or, you know, go to kqslawyers.com. We can help do it. Um, and then you're kind of an Illinois LLC also active to do business and own property in Florida. Now, the second part to that is um, let's say you hit 59 and a half or already are, um, you can't live in it unless you distribute it. So to distribute it, let's say the property is $200,000, um, you're going to have to distribute a $200,000 property. So you got to get an appraisal and then your IRA custodian, us or whoever it is, but do an in-kind distribution of the property and the LLC effectively. And you'd get a 1099 for 200 grand. You'd have to pick up on your tax return. If it's traditional, if it's Roth, it gets distributed out and you can just use it. You don't pay tax on Roth distributions, but assuming it's traditional, it'll be a tax hit to do that. Um, so it's possible some clients that really want to do that, maybe take it over a certain amount of time. They distribute some of it one year and the next, the, the following year and kind of own it 50, 50 personally in their IRA. Um, to kind of break up the tax hit between two years or three. But um, yeah, you can't use it until it's fully distributed. Okay, thanks. I think I'll stick with Illinois then maybe. <laughs> okay. Thanks for answering that. Yep. So Matt, thanks. going back to that just a second. So you had talked about doing a partial distribution and you would partially own it with your IRA? Yeah, so in that example, if you had the LLC that owned the property, we do a 50% distribution of the LLC interest. Let's say you want to break it up over two years. So, you know, it's a $200,000, it's worth 200 grand. So let's cut half of it out, take a 100,000 distribution this year. So in that case, you'd own 50% of the LLC personally, the IRA would own the other 50%. So that's certainly possible. And, um, and, and because of the 50-50 ownership, that would not make it a prohibited transaction it's because not of the... because it's coming via a distribution okay if it's coming via a distribution that you're paying tax on it's okay <laughs> okay as long yeah. as you're paying the tax it's okay yeah. right yeah yeah the irs does you know they encourage that actually so um <laughs> could, could you could you yeah. also possibly then take a an asset that's owned 100 percent of an ira um LLC, could you sell off part of that to a third or another party? Sure. Yeah. As long as they're not disqualified. So okay. yeah, third party, absolutely. And what if it's, what if it's off. your spouse and you wanted to do it either maybe to their IRA? Yeah. They're disqualified. 
so that wouldn't work to your spouse. But let's say your brother or your friend <laughs> or another investor that wants to get in on the deal, sure. Okay, so you couldn't do it to the spouse because of disqualification. Right. Okay. So you couldn't cut your spouse's IRA in on the deal that way, period. No, I mean, they can go in at the beginning when you set up the LLC and do like a multi-member LLC where you break right. it up based on the dollars. But once you're already in, there's their IRA can't come in because they got to buy it from you. And then now you're, right. now your accounts are transacting between each other to buy and sell the ownership. Okay. Yeah. Have you, have, have you heard of or had any success with anybody kind of restructuring something or, or being creative, moving things in and out to restructure to kind of bring in a, a spouse or anything like that? I mean, uh, I mean, well, you'd have to basically move it out and yeah, take a distribution and then put it back into something. Um, I'm trying to think. There's just not a way to do it. So we don't do it. Because <laughs> um, it'd be a prohibited transaction. I don't know a solution. Um, yeah, there's just not a way to do it. Okay. I mean, sometimes you've had a client set to sell a property and get it back to cash. And then we form a brand new LLC. And now they put in theirs and their spouses to buy the property they want. But bringing them in later on to the same deal that's already owned is there's not flexibility to pull it off. Legit, gotcha. at least. Okay. <laughs> Which is all we do. I mean, yes. we're aggressive and we, we're, believe me, we strategize, but there's not a good one to fix that. Okay. So, so the lesson would be if you're planning on doing it at any time, just do it from the beginning straight off. And Right. Okay. Right. And I, I would say most of my clients where both spouses self-direct, they're actually doing their own thing. Um, gotcha. Unless at the very beginning, you're like, hey, we need both accounts to buy a specific property and it's going to be long term. $150,000 property. I'm putting 75K in from mine. You're putting 75K in from yours or 150, whatever, you know, we're going to break up the ownership from the beginning. We're just going to fund it and own this property, hold it for 10 years or whatever, give it, make it a long-term deal. And that LLC is just going to ride with those dollars. That, that works. I do that a lot, but kind of the one that doesn't work is some clients think, well, let's just set up an LLC and whatever money I have in my account, I'll throw in whatever money you have in your account, you throw in and then when you leave your job in two years, you can roll over that money and we'll throw it in the same LLC. No, 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 that doesn't work. Yeah. Um, that, that's a messy way to do it. Right. Okay. All right. Okay. Any other questions for me? I think Bruce had some, but anybody yeah, else I, I in the group? Oh. Yeah. I, I want to re be respectful of your time here, Matt. You've been more than, uh, more than generous with uh, sharing your, your time with us. So I appreciate that. Um, so let me happen. Uh, I had some questions. I'm going to unshare your screen and pull up mine because I was yep. going through your website earlier today. And um, let's just see here. I'm going to pop out of the screen here. Oops. Okay. That's what I want to do. So with your, uh, your directed IRA account, you, you have some tutorials that walk you through the three easy steps, all of that. I yep. was going into, um, find the menu here so about directed IRA is that what it was let's see what comes up here so I, I think it was the different types of IRAs you can set up as was my question let me see oh yeah okay so if you go to the account applications there's all the different account types um, but That's that would be yeah you can do a Open traditional account. IRA Obviously, Roth IRAs, SEP IRAs, health savings okay. accounts. Right. Inherited. Yeah, all those. Okay, there we go. Yeah, traditional IRA inherited. So for those of us that are entrepreneurial and we don't have W-2s, yep. to get something started, would we go into a SEP IRA? Would we go into a mm -hmm. Roth IRA or a 401k or what would that look like? What would you recommend? It depends on how much you're trying to put away. If you're like, hey, I got five grand, I have cash right. I can throw in, do mm -hmm. the Roth IRA, no brainer. Roths okay. are cool, comes out tax free. You're not getting a tax deduction, but but if you're like, you know what, I'm making great money this year, I want to throw more away, you can do the SEP, or even consider the solo K. We set those up in the law firm, and then Directed IRA does the count, the bookkeeping on them. So the solo K is on the law firm site if you wanted to okay. do that. 
Um, but the most common self-directed investor is someone rolling over existing dollars. They already have an IRA at right. Schwab or Fidelity, um, or they got a prior employer 401k at Vanguard or Nationwide or somewhere, and they're rolling it over to a self-directed IRA. So in that case, if you have a traditional account, like most employer plans, your, your 401k or your 403b or your, your pension plan or whatever, most of those are traditional dollars. It'll just roll into a traditional IRA. If you're starting from scratch though, I always would say the first thing to do is the Roth, then kind of graduate from there to the SEP and solo. Um, okay, can you, can you convert one to another? If you start with a Roth and move to a SEP? Can you convert no, it to a SEP? Roth, Roths are their own animal because they're tax-free deals. Whereas okay. a SEP is a traditional type of account. So SEP and traditionals can kind of go between each other um, as can like 401ks. But the Roth IRA is always a Roth IRA. Okay. So and I know Mark talks about, uh, you know, the 401ks. You're, as a, being self-employed, you're able to contribute much more to a 401k versus a, an IRA. Uh, yes. Is that is that under the legal side here versus? Yeah, the IRA so side? solo K's are not like an account you can just set up. Like a solo K is a is a four hundred one k plan that your business adopts. So okay. it's a different animal. We do set them up in our law firm. If you go to kqslawyers.com, there's there's the solo K information and intake form. Okay. So we do the accounting for it um, at Directed Trust Company but the 401k setup and fees and everything and it's more money you know it's a okay the iras are form based the solo k is a pre-approved plan it's a little more complicated you're the trustee of it and so um but those the solo k's are 895 um or 495 if you don't need a consult you know what you're doing it's 495 okay. for docs but 895 includes a consult and that, that's a solo k okay that's a solo k and that's done through the kkos site Yep. Okay, got it. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to kind of plant the seed here, and I'm, I don't know if I have the presentation open here. So for those that are just starting out an IRA or 401k account, um, I've, I've shown you know uh, examples of deals that I've done with wholesaling and things like that. And I, let me see if I have that slide show available here real quick. I wasn't really prepared to do this, but. Um, you know, there's some folks in our group that are, are young and they're just getting started out and those kind of things. So we have, you know, to be able to take a, you know, something like this where, you know, doing a wholesale deal where you, let's say you just had 500 bucks or a thousand bucks, you know, to get started with to set up mm -hmm. a, an IRA account and turn it into a wholesale check that you walk out and, you know, take 17 grand and put it back into your IRA account. Oh yeah, absolutely. Do that in your Roth IRA for sure. Right. Right. So <laughs> Those are on that bill. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, be able to, to multiply your money, you know, rather quickly, um, just starting with some seed cap will really get something going with, uh, you know, in transactional real estate, so to speak, mm -hmm. to be able to, to be able to start growing an account rather quickly. So, um, so just, you know, just food for thought for everybody on, on the call here that, uh, you know, there's, there's ways to do this and be able to fund your account to really grow it, uh, quickly. Um, you know, mm -hmm. if you're looking at, uh, you know, not many days till retirement, right? So you can start building up an account rather, rather large. Um, so if you only had, you know, let's say 500 bucks in an IRA account, and man, I'm going to kind of defer to you on this, and all of a sudden it turns into $17,000. Mm -hmm. um, is that gain in there in a Roth taxable? No, baby, that's the best way to make money and not pay taxes. It's really the only right. legal way to make money and not pay taxes. So, right. Um, yeah, and I've, I've had clients have million dollar returns on $10,000 investments, you know? And yep. So um, it's possible, you know, that those aren't, you know, you don't just come out of the blue and do that on your first deal. You got to see a lot of deals and know how to right. find the opportunity and wait for the right one to do it. But, right. um, but yeah, absolutely. And that's the Roth IRA is totally tax free. You know, it's a long haul. You're, you know, this right. is your retirement account. You're, you know, if someone's 30 years old, it's like, you're not put, dropping this money back out tomorrow, no tax, you know, this is built mm -hmm. up in your retirement account. You get it at 59 and a half. Now there are ways you can actually tap it earlier if you need to, there's what's called the 72 T distribution and stuff. It's a little tricky where you mm -hmm. can take money out maybe in your early fifties, but um, without the penalty. But uh, 
yeah, tax free, yeah. baby. That's the, yeah, Roth the power. IRA. That's why it's so great. The power of knowledge. So yeah. uh, definitely, you know, we're going to be getting into the uh, creative acquisitions classes here, and you know, deal of the decade in that or, or next few weeks. So um, just keep this in mind, you know, for those that are just getting going with with a retirement plan of some type, and certainly queuing on the uh, on the directed IRA, you know. Uh, website and, and take advantage of what they're offering there because uh, it's a pretty phenomenal opportunity to, to grow a retirement account, you know, exponentially. Yeah, if that's what you need to do. So, uh, yeah, so those are just a couple of comments I wanted to make. Um, Kurt, I uh, wanted to bring you out now and have you share your screen because I last night when we talked to our team huddle, you had shown some some of the documents you got from uh, some directed IRA. So I'm going to stop a screen share here and Kurt, if you would. Uh, take control of the screen and just kind of show folks what, what they should expect when they get uh, set up with uh, directed IRA. Okay, here we go. So, so oh, Kurt, nice. come, on, come out a little bit earlier here uh, talking about his experience with your company. So I really wanted him to share what, 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 uh, what, what he received from, from, you know, becoming a member of your group. Okay, so I thought with the IRA LLC, so directed IRA is the IRA, and then we set up the LLC at KKOS, it looks like, and so, which is, you know, as we talk about in the class, a lot of real estate investors, that's a good way to go, it gives you checkbook control on the IRA, and then with, with the LLC, and then some asset protection too, as you know, from just any real estate deal in LLC is good li liability protection. Mm -hmm. So those two work in conjunction there, which is awesome. Um, so Kurt, if you want to full size that screen there uh, and just put it in presentation mode, that way we, when we see the other other uh, photos you have here, I think we'll be able to see them a little easier. So just go into presentation mode on this. There you go. Nice. Awesome. And feel free to uh, comment here, Kurt, as you're, as you're showing these. Next. Kurt, we're not hearing you if you are talking. Yeah. You may be muted still, Kurt. Kurt, you are muted. I'm going to unmute you. Okay, you're unmuted, unmuted now, Kurt. Am there I you muted? are. You okay. are now unmuted. I was I was panicking and rushing back and forth. I don't have any more buttons to push to unmute. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you know, again, I want to. Uh, so I'm just like 18 months. My my son and I are 18 months into Renatus, or almost going on two years here, and. Like we went in full, full in, full in X yeah. combo. And, and recently, um, I think I, actually last year, my brother uh, broke the ice with uh, directed IRA and KKOS. And then I followed in January and we're actually using his uh, self-directed IRA to fund some rehab in my, in, wow. in our, in our apartment buildings. So oh, I can't, great I can't, for that. Love it. Yeah. And so he and I actually sat in the front row when you came to Renatus and peppered you with some few questions there. So okay. I've been going through my uh, shameless plug here with my uh, autographed uh, Matt Sorensen, the self-directed <laughs> IRA handbook that I got in front of me here. But uh, along with it, so there, there's been a lot of, it, it's just so much, there's so much good and financial um, solid, solidness to all this that I want to share mm -hmm. with our group. And uh, so I thought, okay, I just got the KKOS book and I thought, wow, of the, I have a couple other LLCs and it's just so organized because this is something that you just don't go back to it as, as a person that yeah. just uses the LLC. I'm not, I need to have you guys behind me. So in like four months when all this stuff is kind of a fuzzy memory, yeah. Pick up the phone and your people have been awesome. Lee Lee Chen is the my, my guy there. Yeah. And um he's done great and Christy and then T is it Tiana at yep. uh directed yep. IRA. So I can't, you know, but I so I just put this thing together here for the for the folks so they could see that and I put it so everybody this is in the Google Share in our in our Epic Essentials Google Share Drive. So, you know, when you get this nice book after you've gone through all the stuff um with the KKOS folks they're just going to go through and I just, I kind of went through and this is a picture of the indexes here. And yeah. so, you know, you have your articles, your operating agreement, your minutes, right? The membership, 
your, your tax info. And like, I just can't imagine most people have this stuff organized like that in any of their documentation. So yeah. when you start off in, in what I believe is in, I'm not a lawyer and certainly not a professional uh, financial advisor of, at, it, at all. So I need to put my team, one thing I learned since, since joining Renatus is the, is the absolute importance of the community and the team and having you guys behind us here, having behind me and, and anybody else that wants to right, go through you guys. I was putting this together because it's not only the, you know, it's not only getting the thing, it's managing the thing moving forward over time with all right, the deals yeah. that come up. Right. And so there's some things um, like these, I got a whole page of these seals. So if I sell any of my, I'm not sure exactly. I got to dig into a little deal, a little deeper, yep. but there's a package of seals here. So I can, I guess I, I can sort of self certify um, any type of men, member certificates. If I was going to add some people to my LLC, I guess that's what that is for. Right. But, yep, exactly. Yeah, so it's just th these kind of things. Like I didn't even know that existed because it's not really in much of the documentation that we, you know, it's not typically in the in the education. So mm -hmm. it's just the, it's just more stuff coming. So it, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's more education that you get when you get the good book here. So yeah. I just wanted to share that with the group today, and um, and then of course thank you for all that your group and you do and Mark yeah. of course and. Because it, it, it is, it absolutely is life changing, right? Yeah. When you take the stuff seriously and you dig in and you go and you just say, make an offer and you just say, bam, and you write that sucker up and you send it over and they say, okay. Yeah. <laughs> really? And they're like, you're like, what? Did they just say, okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah and, it, it. and that's it. You're like, that's it. I was like hoping for like, you know, like the grand finale and fireworks and everything. Nope. Just <laughs> okay. And you're in. Right. So, well, thanks, Kurt. I really appreciate that. Hey, hey, Kurt, if you can go back a slide or two, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, just to show Sorry. some of the other, uh, uh, maybe go back in between what you just did. Okay, well, obviously that's the book. That's that's what it looks like when you open it. But go to the next page. Uh, next one. Okay, so you guys see the articles, operating agreement, the minutes. These are important documents you need to have in place, and and keep in place and record your minutes and all those things that keep the veil of your, your LLC in place. And, uh, you know, what is it? 150 bucks a year for you guys to update minutes and all that stuff. Yep. Um, yep. That's our company maintenance program. And we do your renewal yep. too with the state. Yeah. Cause you know, being a kind of a sometimes fly by seat of my pants, yep. uh, entrepreneur, um, you don't, you're not dotting the I's and crossing the T's like you should yeah. normally be doing. And Guys, have, my companies are in the company maintenance program, okay? I mean, I work here and I yeah. work here too. So, right. you know, my companies are in that program to be done and renewed by them. So it's like, I don't, yeah. I'm not gonna, I don't even remember my renewal dates. Right. I'm exactly. My LLC exactly. Do you know, I really I, have, I have to a, renew it? I'm busy. I got stuff to do. I'm not, I'm not doing yeah. that stuff. That's too right. hard. And yeah. it just comes and, and goes like, oh, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. And you don't want to, you know, end up you know, with a lawsuit on your doorstep and all of a sudden you got to go back and recreate minutes or try and put things in place that should have been right, there already. Yeah. And, and yeah. you know, the purpose for the company maintenance is to, you know, really dot the I's and cross the T's and make sure that your veil is in place. Your, mm -hmm. your company's legitimate. It's, you know, you can go to a court of law with, with the documentation and, and, and the stuff's yeah. there. Right. So that's, yep. that's you know, as important as We get calls anything. from clients, you know, buying a property or selling a property that are not in company maintenance and they're like they didn't their entities like been dissolved or yeah. you know they didn't even know because they're like i was oh crap i forgot about that you know i did right. it one year and then i the last two yeah. i haven't well you don't have it. your company's actually gone right now yeah. Um, yeah. So. yeah so to so to try and recreate that and go back in time which you ethically and legally can't do yeah, um yeah. you know to have have to do that so we get caught up in the busy you know the busy of life and doing our business and focusing on doing transactions or whatever that looks like and yeah. to, to have this have them looking over your shoulder and, and checking the you know checking the boxes as you need to as time passes by so quickly um is, is well worth the uh, 150 bucks a year so just, yeah. yeah just keep that in mind and i'm i'm 
you know, maybe I'm overplugging your map, but uh, you know, this is stuff. <laughs> yeah, like, working with great. work well, working with a you know a local attorney and and you know people like that, you find out after the fact that your your uh, you know your LLC or your S corp has been dissolved because nobody renewed it. It's like holy crap, that's yeah. that's like a big thing. So and I wasn't even aware that it expired. And so it's like mm-hmm. you know, ask me how I know because <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. it's happened. So well, another uh, another benefit is the is when you are going to invest in another LLC and you've got another. Um, operating agreement or a shareholder agreement to renew or, or to review before you sign it, right? You've got the people that already know and have the history in the file and you send that off and there's a fee for it, but you guys come back with some really good, um, Lee came back with some really good input for me. Right. Yeah. So, um, so, yeah. Yep. So, uh, yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, kind of wind this up here for tonight with Matt and uh, Aaron. So if anybody has any last minute questions or comments, uh, feel free to interject right now and uh, we'll wrap up our time with uh, these two gentlemen. Hit the unmute button. There you go. James. Uh, yeah, so Matt, you talked about if, or kind of mentioned there a little bit, if, if an IR or if a LLC gets dissolved, what yeah. would that, I mean, worst case scenario, what would that look like? Um, I mean, you lose your checkbook control of that, of that money or how does that, how does that play out? Um, let's say it was an IRA LLC. Yeah. I mean, you're going to have to send the money back to your IRA um, and then set up a new LLC and refund it and start over. Mm. So some states will allow you to kind of resurrect, you know, it may not be the right word, but, well. <laughs> you know, bring that LLC back from the dead, so to speak. Um, so that's, but not all states allow it. And the states that do make you pay dearly for it in fees. It's kind of, a, it's a punitive thing. They either like, right. you didn't follow the rules. It's not just the regular fees. It's the regular fees and all these penalties. So um, sometimes you can bring it back. Um, some states you can't. And, or sometimes you're far way too past bringing it back at a state and you just have to get the money back to the IRA, close out the LLC, or I mean, it already is, um, and then move forward with the new one. Sometimes even when you can bring it back, we've had clients we just set up a brand new LLC for because the fees to save that existing one are too high. And this is with an IRA LLC or just your regular LLC or corporation you haven't been paying fees on. So do you, do you put, do you put yourself at exposure with the IRS? Oh. Uh, well, no, not necessarily with the IRS. I, I think you would still be okay because you were operating it in that way, but it's possible if the IRS was aware and you got the wrong IRS agent that, you know, it's having a bad day, they could definitely make a pretty good case out of that. Okay. So another good reason to stay on top of it. Right. Um, the other thing then too, just so I'm clear, um, what Bruce was talking about with, with a, uh, wholesale deal. And, and not putting a, a lot of money into a deal and having a nice profit return to it. As we move forward in the creative acquisitions, um, we'll find out that there's some deals that could be really low or, or almost even no money down type of deals. How would you make your direct, how would you make your uh, self-directed IRA part of that? Just include the uh, LLC as, as part of that, even if they have no money going into it? Well, you have to invest something. So, okay. you know, so even, even as little as a dollar. <laughs> yeah. I, I usually tell the clients to at least 500. Like okay. if you're going to, if it's going to be a deal, you make thousands or tens of thousands on um, hundreds, whatever million, I, you, know, you at least need to have 500 bucks at risk. Um, so um, if it's a, you know, if it's a, you put down 200 bucks and you make a thousand on the, on a, the assignment, fine. But if you're talking about making thousands or tens of thousands, I'd at least put 500 bucks down. And that could just be from the IRA. It could be, you know, most people that are, you know, you want to be nimble on those. So you're going to use an IRA LLC. So there's some cost to get that. But then just have the IRA LLC, you know, XYZ Investments LLC, or whatever your LLC's name is, you know, get on the contract, throw 500 bucks in, then go wholesale it or sell, you know, whatever you want to call it, go sell the contract or option, you know, you know, that's right. more done on other types of deals, but certainly you can wholesale residential properties. That's a more common strategy. And this might sound like a weird question or maybe I'm just not thinking about it clearly. 
or correctly, but when it comes to setting up those LLCs and paying those fees and everything, does that money come out of my pocket directly or can that money come from the money that's in the IRA? So um, legal fees for your IRA or cost for, you know, uh, the um, setting up life? of the IRA or yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, setting up the uh, LLC for the IRA. Yeah. So that's what I was trying to say is that the, there's an exception for legal fees and costs of the IRA that you can pay personally. So, you know, our fee to set up the LLC, that's a legal fee. So that you can pay personally. The, you can have the IRA pay for it if you want, um, or you can just pay for it personally. And it's okay. not a prohibited transaction. So legal fees, accounting fees, and account fees of the IRA are exempt from the prohibited transactional. You can pay that personally. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Yep. Right. Kurt, uh, you had a, a fairly yeah. multi-tiered question here that uh, we yeah. not talking about, so if we could. Okay. Am I muted? You are. You are. We can hear you. Okay. So this is probably a 201 question, and uh, but yeah. it's, it's a little, it's definitely of, of Matt and uh, Aaron's caliber here. So my IRA, in this is a UBIT question, and um, mm -hmm. um, if my, my directed IRA is a invest in a corporation which has a sub LLC which owns an LLC right so so as I'm looking at the Mark Kohler um so your IRA on, on buy a C corp that owns an LLC what did your IRA what corporation did your IRA invest into are we a C corp is uh, it, be a C gonna, corp yes that's it's correct. to be a C corp okay. yes so yep. so the IRA owns a portion of a C corp yeah that C corp has a owns an LLC, mm -hmm. which which has uh, which which we fund some kind of seed money, I guess, into mm -hmm. that uh, LLC, which then goes out for syndication, gets a mm -hmm. gets a big pile, yep, and we build some big properties, then we refinance the big properties, pay off the syndication, yep. and um, and and then that. Yeah, and then that money, flow, the profit flows back into the corporation, and then there's a distribution to my mm -hmm. IRA. Uh, the leverage typically is, uh, yeah, yeah. So is is that home? Oh, yeah. If the IRA is going through the C corp, it's the C corp's got to pay some corporate tax, mm -hmm. um, which has been lowered, you know, for recent years. But there's no UD, UBIT or UDFI you even need to worry about. So if the IRA was directly into the partnership LLC that was doing the syndication, it would have some of that UDFI, um, which causes UBIT. But in the structure you just, you just outlined there, how you're running it, yeah. smart way to do it actually for the IRA, because it's going to be exempt from UBIT. And it's, you're going to have corporate tax, but that's lower than UBIT. UBIT's like 37%. Corporate tax right. is only 21. Yeah. So that's actually yeah. a good structure. Right. Actually, we we formed that structure through a consult with Devin Munns at your uh, okay KKOS. You so we, right. we went through all that. So, yep. Good job. <laughs> the return, yeah. the ROI on the on the on the directed IRA, it just keeps coming. It just yeah. keeps getting better. So yeah, it's it's good. Awesome. Yeah, that's exactly a perfect example of just having the right people around you to ask the right questions, so we don't just right. go down yeah. the wrong road. So yep. thanks again for awesome. all you do for us. Yeah, yep. our pleasure. Cool. All right. Well, this is the last call here. So, uh, any 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 last minute questions here for Matt and or Aaron? Hi, Bruce. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, this is Lashawn. Hi, Matt. Hi, Aaron. Hello. Uh, I had a question for um, if someone has a short term rental business. Um, yeah. How have you experienced anyone that has that kind of business and how this um, the funds could be used? Yep. Absolutely. So we've had lots of clients with IRAs doing short-term rentals, um, always, almost always through an LLC, of course. Um, the one thing you got to be careful about, because this is a, a UBIT, UBTI question as well, really, with the, the issue is don't provide services during the stay. So if there are services during the stay, it can be considered more like a bed and breakfast hotel, which can cause a UBIT, as opposed to rental income. So even if it's nightly rental, as long as there's not service during the stay, there can be services between stays, like you're cleaning it between, 
that you know you've got a property manager or a management company or cleaning company you're paying because um, you can't do it with your IRA but um, absolutely you can do it just be careful about services during the stay you can do it but it'll cause you but tax for the IRA okay so if I understand you correctly someone could use someone's retirement fund to mm -hmm. um, do the startup in regards to purchasing the content in the short-term rental, like the, the furniture and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Okay. Now, let me say, are you buying the short-term rental or are you leasing it and basically no. subleasing to the short-term Le rental? Leasing and subleasing. Yeah, you could do that. So the IRA or the IRA LLC is probably what you'd use an IRA LLC. The LLC would be the tenant, right? And then it would sublease to the, the short-term tenants that are coming in. Okay. Yeah, and it would pay for the furniture that, that are in there or any things that you know, you're know you putting in there for you know people that can stay there short term, you know, you gotta furnish it, that stuff, so. Correct. And, and then, then- That's the LLC's property, so you can't use that. So like when you're done with short term, you gotta sell all that stuff or donate it or something. Oh, when, you, when you've used that LLC and you're done with that short term rental, you can't continue to- mm -hmm. To use it with another lease. Oh, you could move it to another property that the LLC owns. I'm just saying you personally can't. I had an issue with a client. It's like they had a kind of VRBO property that they sold. They actually owned it and sold it. And they're like, what do we do with the furniture? I'm like, they're like, they're like can we just take this to our other house? I'm like, no, like it's the IRA owns this furniture. It's kind of odd because you can take furniture home, right? Or move it somewhere. Right. Um, so that's the, that's the point I was just trying to make. It's that just. No, I, I get what you're saying because if they dissolve it or change to another location, they might want to take that furniture and put it on their own property. And you're saying no because it yeah. belongs to the. I get it. Yeah. So if I understand you correctly, um, with the a, a short-term rental business, the the startup um, mm -hmm. can be funded by that by the um, account, um, mm -hmm. and the cleaning service and all of that can be, but. Yeah, paid for by the LLC, for sure. Okay, but you mentioned something about services. Um, so going back to what someone else said, if I had, if my cleaning crew for some reason couldn't make it, I couldn't go in there and do that work. I would have to find another business to do it or someone else to do it. Yeah, I mean, like I think emergency scenarios, you're okay. Like the example we had was the, you know, the water's leaking, you know, and mm -hmm. the plumber's not going to get there in time. Yeah, exactly. that's one where don't worry, that's an emergency scenario. Okay. If it's a cleaning issue. I don't know. That's more of a gray area. Gray. Okay. Like, there's nobody really policing that with the IRS. It's kind of an on your honor rule. Um, okay. If you were doing that on a regular basis, I definitely have a problem with it. But okay. if it was a one time thing or that's, you know, rare thing, I mm -hmm. wouldn't stress about it. Okay. And then you mentioned about you can't do services. Can you give examples of services? I mean, like services during the stay. Like, let's say someone's like, Hey, while you're here, you know, we provide breakfast. And if you're here a week, we do a mid cleaning service of like housekeeping. Um, you know, I got some tours if you want, you, you know, like if you're providing like service, like think more like bed and breakfast type stuff, um, that's a problem. Okay. Some value add things that. Yeah, it's, a, you can do it, but it's like, it just, changes the tax nature, the IRS doesn't count that as rental income anymore. They call that, they consider that ordinary income more like you're a hotel or a bed and breakfast now, which for an IRA causes the UBIT tax. Okay. When you, cause you want rental income. If you're just getting rental income, you don't need to worry about taxes with an IRA. Okay. Um, I've known some people that will charge extra if somebody wants to check in early or check out late. That's okay. Okay. That's okay. That's just, that's just, just rent, really. I mean, that just rolls back into the IRA. Yeah, that's totally cool. Okay. But when you say provide bed and breakfast, meaning that, oh, if you want to have breakfast, you know, or lunch or dinner, and we have it delivered, now that's going into the other territory you're talking about. The right. Time. Don't do that. Okay. Right. Or, or if you're actually making the meals and bringing them over, you can't do that. Not okay. The IRA, so, right. Okay. Well, thank you for your insight. I appreciate it. So glad to have you here, Matt. Yeah, my pleasure. Great. All right. Well, Matt, Aaron, thank you so much for uh, for your you know, for being on here tonight. It's, it's been awesome. And I, I did record this, so if you folks need to hop back in on here, I'll, I'll share the link with you. Um, but you guys are uh, been you know more than honored to have on the, on the call here tonight. And you know, thanks again. 
I'll let you guys go ahead and dismiss yourself now. We're going to actually hop into a little different topic here as we wind up our night. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow night on the on the, the webinar, yeah. Matt, you and Matt. Yeah, please you and Mark, join that. So. And thanks for helping yep. get the word out on it. I appreciate Absolutely. having us on tonight. Yep. Thank, you, thank, thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Aaron. Thank yes. you. Okay, take care, guys. All right, you guys have a good night. Stay, stay well. Yeah, <laughs> thanks, stay everyone. Healthy, uh... Right? Right. All right. Cool. I'm going to stop the recording and then... Uh...